Welcome everyone. We are glad that you can join us this afternoon um, as you're looking to learn more about the athletic training and the allied health sciences here at Carthage. My name is Ashley Hansen. I'm the Associate Vice President for Admissions. And today we have three of our staff and professors from the athletic training field that are going to be talking with you specifically about the program and what you can do while you're at Carthage and what students are doing with it after <coughs> Carthage. And so if you're new to the webinar feature, so at the bottom, there is a chat box. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, you are welcome to write it there. And then as a group, we will answer those. And there's also a private Q&A section as well, if there's something that you wanna ask privately. Today's presentation is being recorded so if you wish to share this with family members or friends afterwards, um, it'll be posted to our website tomorrow. But we're so excited that you're here. We wish that we could be meeting with you in person. And when campus does open up again, we would love to have you for an on-campus visit. But for now, I would like to turn it over to our athletic training, our staff, Lori Jensen, Dan Ruffner, and Alicia Ballant. Thanks a lot, Ashley. Um, I'll start out with a short little presentation to give you a little bit of information about Carthage's Allied Health Science and Athletic Training Programs. So let me pull it up for you. All right, so, well, let's see here. Let's start from the very beginning here. <laughs> so where I'm gonna start here is telling you a little bit of a story. Um, we have a grocery store here in, called Wood, Woodman's. And I went there to pick up some salad dressing a little while back. Uh, it seemed like a simple in and out trip. Uh, I even parked in the less than 15 minute parking spot. I dashed in, I asked a clerk where I could find the salad dressing. They said aisle 17. So I went to find the aisle 17, and when I arrived, I felt like I was standing at the reflection pond in front of the Lincoln Memorial. I just froze in my tracks. How in the world could there be so many choices for salad dressings? There was low fat, and no fat, and gluten-free, and raspberry, and green goddess, and I wandered aimlessly up and down the aisles, and finally just grabbed a bottle that was on sale and at eye level. Um, the bottle still is actually in my refrigerator unopened. Um, Choices can be difficult with so many options. That final decision is in the distance, it's so far away. Uh, so this is probably where you're at right now. Uh, you have a lot of things you're looking at, just different lists of college names and possible majors and your must-haves and your nice-to-haves. The options are endless. Um, you're probably asking yourself, you know, how do I make a decision to my future profession? Uh, what school is right for me? Uh, will I fit in? So today you'll get some help filtering through some of those challenges that you're facing. Um, as Ashley said, I'm Lori Jensen. I'm the program director for the athletic training program. And along with me would be faculty members Alicia Blunt and Dan Rockner. Uh, together we have about 45 years of Carthage experience to share with you. So the program, um, there are similarities between all KD accredited programs. Uh, all programs must teach the standards to meet the minimum requirements of knowledge and skills needed for an entry level athletic trainer. Each program though decides how the information is presented and when the program sequence where it's taught. And then programs can also go above the minimum requirements mandated by KD. So those are the differences that will help you choose which school is right for you. Now, our philosophy at Carthage has always been to get the students involved interacting with the patients as soon as possible, obviously under controlled environments. As you'll soon hear, we'll continue this practice as we transition into this 3-2 program. So the first three years of the program, you would be an allied health science major, okay? The second two years, you'll be an athletic training graduate program. 
student. So you will graduate in five years with two degrees, a bachelor's in arts in allied health science and a master's of arts in athletic training. We're currently under review for the master's program in athletic training by Katie, who's our accrediting agency. Um, I've had discussions with them that looks like that the process should be finished by early summer. So let's break it down. Um, the bachelor's in arts in allied health science is what we call the pre-professional phase. And this is where you're gonna be in your freshman, your sophomore, and your junior years. So you're gonna be taking those allied health science major courses, there's 40 credits, and then you're also gonna be taking your general ed requirements. You'll then apply to the athletic training graduate program your junior fall, um, specifically September 15th would be the date for that. And then what you do is you move into the professional phase or the masters of arts in athletic training. And that will be your senior and your fifth year. So you'll start the master's program that summer between your junior and senior year. Now, during that senior year, you're going to be completing the rest of your institutional 138 bachelor credit requirements, which means that you're actually going to be considered status-wise an undergraduate student still, meaning you're going to be paying the undergraduate tuition during that senior year. You're also going to be for financial aid purposes, still listed as an undergraduate. Um, that's a good thing because there's a completely different set of rules for scholarships and loans and grants if you are in a status of graduate student. So then that fifth year is the year that you're actually gonna be in the graduate status and you'll be paying a graduate tuition. We have a flat fee graduate tuition for that fifth year. It's $28,000 and that would cover summer, fall, J term, and spring of that fifth year. So the program application process, um, you're gonna complete the application um, and that is due in September 15th of your junior year. Um, you will have access to this application sophomore spring, so it'll leave you plenty of time to get it completed by September 15th of your junior year. Um, the requirements for the application is you're gonna need a 3.0 GPA. You're gonna have to complete all the prerequisite coursework, and that coursework is just embedded in the athletic training major. So if you are current in the sequencing that you should meet this requirement. You also have to complete the jumpstart experiences. Um, I'll talk about those in a second. And then an interview with the program admissions committee. Okay, then you'll be notified by October 15th of acceptance into the program. So jumpstart experiences. Um, remember our philosophy was getting students interacting with patients as soon as possible. Um, we have built into the program these experiences to support this through faculty and mentor-led activities. So beginning with your freshman fall, you're gonna be engaging in three to four workshops per semester. And these workshops are gonna be throughout the three years that you're an allied health science major. And the purpose of these is to develop an understanding of the profession, um, also to provide some fundamental skill acquisitions. You'll learn how to tape and brace and emergency care and splinting. Also encouraging those interpersonal uh, per, uh, relationships that you're gonna have to start to develop between your fellow athletic training students and the faculty. So then when you enter the graduate program, you're ready to hit the ground running because you have some practical skills right away that day one when you come that first day in the summer, you're ready to start um, actually working. So why Carthage? Um, the jump starts, like I said, no one offers such a comprehensive and interactive op opportunity for the pre-professional athletic training students. That really sets us apart from other programs. Um, the interprofessional experiences, clinical rotations, um, all programs will offer you clinical rotations. It's the length and the sites of those placements that are going to be different. Grand rounds, th this is unique to Carthage. Um, using the medical model, we actually hold weekly physician collaborations with our students where they present one of their clinical cases to the physician. 
and then they collaborate on the diagnosis and the treatment plans for that patient. Uh, if you ask our students, they tell you that these opportunities are probably one of their favorite experiences um, in our program. We're trying to keep our cohort sizes small, of limiting it to eight to 12. Um, this will allow for a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions with the faculty throughout the curriculum. Uh, international learning, uh, Carthage ranks number three nationally in short-term study abroad. Um, these experiences strengthen the students' understanding of patient cultures by visiting this other countries, and this is usually done during the J term. Uh, usually our students will choose the medical mission to Nicaragua, um, although athletic training is in the initial planning stages for an AT-specific trip to Europe. Um, this will be an exciting addition to the program later. Uh, we also are working with a publisher to package some of our core textbooks into electronic access format for a lifetime fee of only $300. Um, that's a huge savings when you think that one textbook would cost up to $200 alone. And then finally, um, additional certifications uh, throughout our curriculum, certification opportunities are available. They'll be certified in basic life support, emergency medical response, stop the bleed, um, we'll also prepare you for the corrective exercise specialist in the functional motion, uh, functional movement screening certifications. So hopefully your view is a little less daunting. Um, I hope gave you some clarity on Carthage's athletic training program and the allied health science major and how we differentiate ourselves from other programs. So I thank you for your interest in Carthage. Um, and if you have any questions, I or the other faculty members would be happy to answer any of them for you. Thank you, Lori. So again, for those of you who are with us this afternoon, you're welcome to drop your question into the chat feature. Um, but the first question that we had is, you know, can you explain the grand rounds a little bit, you know, what those exactly are and where where the students would do those? Sure, sure. Um, we have team positions that come in every week. Um, and what happens is throughout the week, our students will be actually evaluating patients and that we're working directly with patients, which will be our student athletes. So if they come across a case that's either something they haven't seen before, they're confused about something or something's just not progressing like they um, planned on it to be progressed, um, what they'll do is they will sit down with the doctor in a presentation format. So the entire uh, athletic training class will be there. All the allied health students would be there as observers only, um, but the athletic training students are the ones that will be presenting. And they would present their case to a doctor um, tell them the history, the objective data that they found, what their diagnosis is, what their treatment plan is. And then the doctor um, and that athletic training student would have a conversation. And then everyone else in the room could ask questions. It really is a great learning um, opportunity. I mean, I go to them and I learn something every time I go. Because the doctor, our doctors are really good at education. They really love educating. Um, our students. So um, that's basically where it is. And it's held right at Carthage. We, we hold it down in our um, rehab facility. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. Mm -hmm. um, would, would Dan and Alicia be able to introduce themselves and kind of their backgrounds and, you know, um, just a little bit more about them? Sure, yeah, I can go. Um, my name is Alicia Blunt. I'm the clinical education coordinator here at Carthage. Um, I've been a certified athletic trainer for the last 10 years. I've been in multiple settings, including high school, collegiate, orthopedic, uh, industrial, and rehab clinics. Oh, Dan, you're on mute. My bad. Hi, I'm Dan Ruffner. I've been at Carthage uh, the last 27 years as the program director and head athletic trainer and strength coach and maintenance and lots of other things that I have done over the years to uh, enhance Carthage in any way possible. I've taught most of the courses, uh, typically kind of focus now on structural kinesiology uh, one assessment class, two rehab classes, um, and labs that are associated with that. So therapeutic rehab tends to be the 
the main area that I teach in. Great, thank you. We had a question from a student. What should we expect from the intro to athletic training course? A lot of fun and a great professor. <laughs> I'm teaching that class. Um, it's basically just kind of getting you used to the idea of healthcare. Um, and, and so the students understand that we are in a, in a healthcare um, field. Um, this isn't you know, weight training, something like that. So um, it's just to get them kind of accustomed to what athletic training is, and then also what athletic training at Carthage is. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do um, in the intro class. With a degree in allied health and master's in athletic training, is it a possibility to become a strength and conditioning coach as well? Sure, Dan, you wanna take this one, seeing this is your deal? Yes, uh, we actually have had multiple students graduate as certified athletic trainers and also get a certification in strength training. Uh, and they, they come out dual credentialed. I am one of those people that is dual credentialed. And then we have, uh, with those graduates, we have some that are at Division I institutions as strength coaches, um, and others have just used that certification to enhance wherever they're at from uh, quad graphics. We have somebody that does a little bit of that in quad graphics, as well as other some smaller colleges. So that's, that's definitely a good way to go, the dual credentials. And then kind of as you go through your career, you can figure out whether you want to do both or maybe you want to steer yourself towards strength and conditioning or steer yourself more towards athletic training. To do both is possible, but typically athletic trainers go the coaching route, strength and conditioning, or into specifically the healthcare of athletic training. But we most certainly have a lot of people that are interested in doing both. And we help people get certified in both areas. And actually, we push for that. We are definitely one school that pushes for additional certifications. We believe in lifelong learning. You never stop. If you could see my desk right now, you would see multiple textbooks. You would see textbooks outside of my class um, that I sit and read um, for fun, which sounds kind of geeky, but that's the stuff that I like to read and watch videos on and YouTube. I search, search that as well. So. We like that idea because it shows us that you want to continue learning. And that's what we like people that, that want to be lifelong learners that are always willing to be open-minded um, and continue learning because in the field of medicine, it's, it's never ending. And once you learn something in six months that can change. So you've always got to be open to new evidence-based medicine out there um, so that you can continue to improve your skills. Awesome, thanks, Dan. So how many students are in the program? Uh, well, in our bachelor's level program, which where we're at right now, the one that we are uh, transitioning out of, we have 27 of them. <laughs> it's hard to, so, um, no, 24 of them we had through the program. So um, every year it's, it's different, but with this new 3-2 program, what we're looking for is about eight to 12 per, per class. Where do the students complete their clinicals? Uh, well, Lise, you want to take that one? That's your, your area. Sure. We have multiple places that students complete clinicals. They um, range in variety. So we have students, all students will go to a high school setting. All students will go to an orthopedic setting. And in that setting, there's two different um, kind of experiences you'll have in the orthopedic setting. One of them is kind of buddying up with a, an athletic trainer who is acting as a physician extender in an orthopedic clinic that we have here in town. And the other experience at the orthopedic site is surgery. And so there are multiple, um, multiple opportunities. We also do have students who are going to um, as a general rotation going to a family practitioner in town as well to help supplement their general medical uh, class. We also have students who would want to maybe say gear towards a, a collegiate um, 
career. And so we have reached out and made those connections as well. So we've had students going to other colleges. Um, we're working on a few different things as well, um, including an industrial setting, um, an ER rotation possibly. So we are working on a few more options as well. Um, students speak pretty highly of the clinical rotations that they do have, they really enjoy them. And as they, as they go through the master's program, part of being in the master's program is also what they call an immersive experience, which means you basically work a 40 hour week for at least a minimum of four weeks. Um, those will be during a J term. So if our students um, prefer to stay at, at home, if they, if they live um, somewhere else, um, we can set up things in, in the towns that they live in. We can reach out and try to find those things. Um, and we have alumni all over this country. I mean, we have possibility of uh, alumnus that works with Cirque du Soleil. So that's an opportunity that if somebody lives out by Vegas or out west or just wants to go there for a month and spend time there, um, we have all different types of avenues we can go, performing arts, industrial, um, tactical. So there's different ways um, that we can get you in different environments depending on where you really want to practice. Great. Can I be an athlete while being in the program? Um, you, we encourage you to be an athlete while you're in allied health science. Um, definitely the, that freshman, um, sophomore, and junior year. Once you enter the graduate level program, um, that is not possible to be an athlete and being in the graduate level program. Is there financial aid offered for that fifth year that you spoke about, Lori? I am not a financial aid guru. Um, Ashley, you probably know about more about financial aid than I know. Um, so that would be a question for um, our financial aid people or for um, Ashley. I don't know. Ashley, would you know anything about financial aid? Absolutely. And yeah, and so yes, there are financial aid options available for students at that graduate level. You know, at Carthage, we work with everyone, the students and their families on an individual basis. But yes, there are financial aid opportunities available. Where are some of our graduates working after graduation? Oh, we have graduates all over. Um, we've had, uh, we have graduates at D1 level um, working with athletics. We have them at high school levels. We have them at D2 and D3 levels um, in high school and colleges. Um, we've had people um, work at the um, U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado before. Um, we've had people that are uh, strictly industrial. They want to go the industrial way. Uh, we've had students working in uh, the military in like boot camps. Um, that's actually kind of a growing um, niche for athletic trainees to work uh, with the military um, because they are athletes. Those, they definitely are athletes. So um, those are a few places that um, our, our current ones are working. And then um, also a big chunk of them do go into orthopedic offices and act as physician extenders which basically means that they do uh, take the patient, they do the front end of the evaluation, ask patients questions, and then they give the doctors kind of a breakdown of what they came up with. The doctor flies in, does his thing, doctor leaves, and we go back in then and, and you know, order the testing that the doctor wants, or we go through the protocols of the treatment plan what the doctor has um, decided to do. So those are kind of the places that we all, most of our athlete, our athletic trainers have been going to. Great. Um, so one question that just came through is, so the 3-2 program is faster for students than other athletic programs at other schools? It depends on what their um, program um, framework is. Um, so you have a couple of options. You can do a four-year degree in something, but it doesn't really matter anything, and then apply into a master's level athletic training program, um, which is two more years. So that's six years it would take you if you go through that route. And then there are a few programs like us where it's a three, two, where we comp compact that bachelor's into three years instead of four years. So you're out in five years instead of six years. So those are basically the options you're gonna have, either a six year path or a five year path. 
Great. What is the difference between the athletic training program at Carthage and a physical therapy program? Well, physical therapy programs are doctorates. Um, so um, it's a little bit more ex extensive time and commitment wise. Um, and physical therapists generally work just their settings different than what we generally would work in. They would be working more in a clinic setting, um, not necessarily with athletes, um, uh, where athletic trainers have a little bit more option as to really where we practice. Uh, and we're working with a physically active population. That is, that is our um, audience that, and our patient population is the physically active population. These are great questions, everyone. Again, if you have a specific question here for our faculty, there, there are experts in the field, you know, please feel free to use that chat feature at the bottom of the screen. But one student just asked, you know, what is the most challenging part of the program? Ooh, um, I would have to say... Um, Time management. Yeah, <laughs> time management and um, under, understanding themselves, a little self-awareness. Um, I, I think, especially coming in as young adults, sometimes it's hard to self-reflect. Um, and that's, that's a skill that hopefully we teach you early on is a self-reflection um, and, and to think intrinsically and not intrinsically, meaning things aren't happening to you because of an outside force. It's internally coming from you. Um, so I think those two things um, would be probably the most difficult transition for our students. Great. If there's other questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat feature. You know, we will be on the call as long as we have questions, you know, coming. You know, what would the three of you leave with our guests here today as kind of your best parting words or, you know, why? I know we've already asked why Carthage, but, you know, what really makes this program so much better than any of the other options out there? Um. You know, I, I don't want to say we're better than anyone. Um, we all have our own um, feel, our own culture, the, uh, the, own, all the, the way we do things. I mean, we are very, um, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of, Dan? Uh, we're, you know, we call each other by our first names. Nobody calls us, you know, Professor Jensen. I, I wouldn't even acknowledge that. I wouldn't even know they're talking to me. You know, I'm Lori, he's Dan, she's Alicia. You know, they have our phone numbers that I get texts and phone calls from my kids all day. I call them my kids even, and my kids get mad when I call them my kids too. But, um, but my kid, you know, the kid, my kids call me all the time. And, and if you want uh, an experience where you feel like you're in a family, then that's, Carthage is it. Um, I know, you know, I know Brody just got a boat a few months ago. I know, you know, I, I know my kids, I know what they're doing when they're not in the athletic training room. Um, and they come to us and, you know, they ask us questions that are not really related sometimes to um, athletic training. I mean, some personal stuff or, or just our opinions on things, you know, so um, that's the feel that you're going to get at Carthage. Um, is it's small, it's family. Um, our kids love like brothers and sisters and they fight like brothers and sisters I always uh, and, and so that's that's what we have at Carthage. We've also always thought that uh, our program gets people involved sooner than most programs and we and our students verify this when they talk to other students from other programs other schools uh, our students are always involved in the hands-on clinical portion typically their first semester and some students wait until their second or even third year. So we, our roots of the program started off in the internship route, which was a very hands-on involved uh, internship route towards accreditation. So back in the day, you'd have to put in at least 1500 clinical hours to be able to sit for the exam. Most of our students um, put in about that number of hours and the more, you can't just learn it in a classroom. You can learn it in a classroom, but it's never gonna stick in your head unless you go out and apply it. 
and our kids get that chance to learn it in the classroom, practice it in the classroom, and they get to experience it some, sometimes in the same day or the same week. Um, and that from the beginning, from their freshman year through their senior year, and even when we do senior interviews, which we just did this morning with our seniors, most of them, every one of them agreed that being involved early and being hands-on was very beneficial. They don't, they don't feel like an outsider because they get involved right away. So I don't know of any other program. There's probably some out there but I don't know of any other program that gets their students started in the hands-on portion of the program like ours has. Now moving to the masters changes that a little bit, but the jumpstart programs that have been developed are designed to get our students involved. So they don't feel like they've got to wait to start to learn the information that they're probably very eager to learn. And we, we want you to get involved because we know there's benefit um, to any hands-on experiences that you can get into. We know there's great benefit to that. We don't, like a D1 schools, if you think about a D1 athlete that's potentially going to go pro in any sport or somebody that's um, bringing in money, TV money, ad money, um, D1 is run by money. And those, those athletes, as an athletic training student at a bigger school, at a Madison, at an Illinois, at a Marquette, you might never touch the starting quarterback. You might never touch a, a starting point guard. The only people that will be allowed to work on those athletes are the certified athletic trainers. And at Carthage, your first semester, once you learn how to tape, you could tape our, tar our starting quarterback. You could tape our starting point guard. You could tape the starting pitcher on the women's softball team. We don't have this air of, you know, you've, you, you aren't good enough to work with our athletes. Um, we get you in and we get you involved. And those athletes are good about it. They're friendly. They're, they don't feel like uh, they should only be treated – by the certified athletic trainers or by the seniors in the program. We don't have that air of superiority about us around here. Um, and if we did, we'd probably squash it right away. We want people to be involved. Our coaches understand that. Our athletes understand that. So there, there's no waiting or there's no exclusion from things because the athlete is you know, a superstar and can't be touched or worked on by anybody but a certified. That's just not true here. You're going, to get, you're going to get involved right away, and it doesn't matter who the athlete is. You could tape them or, or work with them in some way or, or you know, some fashion. Okay. Yeah, and that's true. We had seniors that were um, talking about that this morning even during their senior exit interviews, and they've been here in the program for the last uh, three or four years. So, um, you know, they, they, they know what they're talking about. They, they've been there. They've experienced that. And a lot of them also said they really liked the familial feel to Carthage. They liked, um, you know, we had one, one girl this morning who is from a smaller town and she said, you know, it has a really small town feel. And we had another one that said, you know, it's, it's like family. Um, and, and right there, that, that should tell you how it's been for them. That might be how it is for you too. We have some great questions coming in. You know, what does working as an AT in an industrial setting look like? Well, um, I did that while I was in graduate school. Um, and so it depends on where you're working at, but you do a lot of um, education um, and ergonomic training, and you do a lot of work comp where you'll, if uh, one of the employees gets injured, they keep them in house and you actually do the evaluation, you're going to do their um, treatment, and then you'll also reassign them to whatever duties they can do based on what um, their injury was. Um, Alicia, what did you do? I know you worked industrial also. I did, and my dog's barking. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you can hear him. Um, the mail came, so. But anyway, so in the industrial setting, I had worked in the industrial setting um, part time. It was part of my job, and my other job was um, doing some other things. And that was at a facility that manufactured um, parts for laundry. Um, machines, washers, dryers, and that type of equipment. And so there was 1,500 employees at that facility and uh, two athletic trainers. And so a lot of it was checking in with your, um, your employees that are, are hurt. It's going around and making sure that 
their setting is conducive to the work that they need to do. Um, if there's a type of injury that's very common, especially one in a particular position within that facility, an athletic trainer will go to that position and, and kind of um, observe that position and see, you know, what's healthy for the body to do and what's not. Or is this athlete or is this um, employee, because some of them have pretty athletic jobs, um, believe it or not, and what they have to do, um, very physical work, some of it. And, you know, are they twisting too much? And that's why they're having back pain or that's why they're having, you know, pain here or there. And so a lot of it is assessment. A lot of it is taking care of the um, employees that are hurt and they come in and checking in on them. It's also being in contact with their supervisors and kind of helping, um, you know, along, along those lines, if an employee can't do this, well, what can they do? and their supervisor needs to know that. So it's a lot like working with athletes, your athletes, a coach, a supervisor, and if they can't do something, well, what can they do? And, you know, maybe helping your coach figure out where they would still fit um, for that day. Great. Is it possible to do a double major in exercise science and this athletic training program? Well, um, you, you could, but the question would be, I would throw it back at there. Why would you want to, you really, you really want to pick one or the other. Um, if you want to be an athletic trainer, uh, a certified athletic trainer, our major is the place to be exercise. Science will not get you to be an athletic trainer. It, it might be if, if you wanted to be a coach of a sport, uh, in sport management, maybe an athletic director, uh, maybe a strength coach, that would be if that was the direct route that you wanted to go without the athletic training combination, that might be the, the way to go. But if this is uh, being asked by the person that is involved or wants to do strength and conditioning, um, I would tell you that you still want to be in the athletic training route because the dual credential person is, is who you want to be in the future. There are strength coaches that do not have an athletic training background, but our recent hire at Division One was hired over, I think, over 100 applications. Um, he's only been out of school for a couple of years. He got the job because he's dual credentialed as an athletic trainer and as a certified strength coach. So to advance yourself in either field, but probably especially the strength coach, having that athletic training background is huge because you understand injuries. Uh, the strength coach, the typical strength coach knows how to deal with healthy people. And then if you have the dual credentials, um, you understand how to work with the injured um, all the way back to competition, um, probably better than most athletic trainers. So that's, that's really the way to go. But I, I would not recommend doing both, kind of pick one or the other. We would maybe recommend a degree in psychology, maybe a degree in business. There are other double majors that you might want to jump onto, but there's so much parallel coursework between exercise science and athletic training that you're probably not expanding your horizon as much as you think you might be. Lori could maybe tell me I'm wrong on that, but I don't know if I'm wrong on that. Um, no, it, but you have to also remember too, um, our course sequencing is set so we can get you through. So there is very little wiggle room for like electives to pick up another major. I think there's, um, four, five, six, maybe seven actually um, electives slots for you. Um, so where those electives fall and the sequencing of another major's courses just may not line up. So to double major, um, that would be a feat um, to get that done. Because once you hit your senior year, you're strictly athletic training. Um, there is, you're in the graduate program. So everything that you want to get done bachelor wise has to be done those first three years. So a double major would be extremely difficult if, if at all possible. And it can water you down. It can be too much and it can impact your grade, your GPA. So overall grade point does matter. So you want to be careful that you don't take on too much and drown yourself in classes and you're not able to maintain that 3.0 or higher, depending on, on where you might want to be after you leave Carthage. Right. Great. Very um, few people have done a double major here. I can't think, I can think of maybe one student that's been a double major. And that was in the four year. 
So, um, yeah. Great. Uh, what a young lady has asked, how does testing work for athletic training? Um, weekly tests, you know, pop quizzes, open books, etc. Well, yep, that all, all of that. <laughs> yeah, it all depends on what class it is, who your faculty um, is. Um, so it could be all of it. Yeah, it could be anything uh, and everything, including um, actual um, psychomotor testing, I uh, mean, having you actually do something, you know, show us that you can perform something. Um, so that's in addition to that. So the clinical proficiency is to make sure that you're proficient doing the clinical skills and putting them all together. Um, so it's a process that we just step you through, though. It's, it's not it's, uh, something that anything different than any other time that you've gone to school and taken yeah, our our board of certification exam is all multiple choice so we try and emphasize multiple choice questions so that you can get in the the right frame of mind to take those questions but we still give short answer um, multiple choice fill in the blank true false you get all of that but the majority at least for me and i think the rest of us the majority is still multiple choice totally designed to get you prepped and ready for your BOC, your Board of Certification Examination. Great. Thanks for all the great questions for our guests who are here. Um, it looks like we have answered all of them. Um, but again, if you do have a question, feel free to write it in the text box. You know, if you would like to meet individually with any of the three here today, we are more than happy to set that up. We can do that through the Office of Admissions. And we would love to have you on campus when we are able to resume our campus visits. Um, but thank you, Dan, Lori, and Alicia. Great information. And we appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.